You are so Hello. sweet. Hi. Hello, Hello everyone's here. Oh. oh. Hello. Hello. Suddenly, I see so many hands. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we already disappeared. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Hello. <laughs> Mm. Okay, our last speaker is here, so I think uh, we can start early. Can you see it? Yes, <laughs> SDG Children Exploration. Yes. Okay, what a button, wait. Button. So, then we will leave the time to Vera and the prince and the princess. Mm, it's my privilege. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let me count my team members first. Okay, and a little bit chaotic here and there. Okay. The water is sometimes chaotic. <laughs> okay, it's happening all the time, no worries. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Yang Yang Song from Dreamland. Today, I'd like to talk about the SDG children exploration, exploration, okay? So first, it's something about us. Okay, sorry. So Dreamland is an art center providing drama courses and projects, emphasizing expressive ability and humanity. And that's to help children to better understand themselves, to understand the world to be a well-rounded person. So Dreamland is aimed to create a fantasy where children can enjoy high quality of company in the process of their growth. So here you can see are the performance that is created by the children with teachers themselves. So in this process, the company comes from parents, peers, and the nourishment, most of all, of the drama. This company will not only be for the childhood, but also for the after years, when our little dreamers record their memories on this dreamland. So this picture shows the final performance of a term when parents get together to watch their kids' performance in our classroom. So after years, when our little dreamers record their memories on this dreamland, they will find happiness, belongings, and support. So we can see a lot of pictures. And this is when we uh, create the drama together. And this is the, uh, I think that's the Aladdin. Yes. Yeah, this is Aladdin. We started our SDG project last year. Our first one is go for quality education. When students got together again in the classroom, they felt stronger that they longed for the presence of their peers and face-to-face -face communication with teachers. So we connected students from UK who were still kept at home to interview them. The difference between remote learning and sitting in the classroom. We broke down the concept of quality into questions that students are more familiar with, such as how many classes do you have? When do you start your class every day? And uh, how many students are there in the virtual classroom? And who check your homework every day? So through comparison, we found out students would reflect more on themselves and understand the world better. So these are the five SDG goals we've covered this year. So that is the reason why we place SDG projects as our fixed events this year. So our SDG project involves teachers from different disciplines. They are mostly drama teachers, botanists. If our project involves a little bit outside activities or uh, exploration into the natures and outward bound trainers, sometimes they marched into the forest where there's no original trains. They have to create something on their own and also artists to teach students how to paint from their mind, educators, nutritionists, and engineers 
in order to give students professional guidance in various projects. And here are two principles, guiding principles, when our teachers design our projects. The first one is attainable. The second is, of course, sustainable. So these are the two guiding principles. I'm going to talk about them in a little bit details. The first one, attainable. Some may say sustainable development is too abstract for children to understand, but we believe to build up a sense of global citizenship is never too early. It's like planting a seed. Though we don't know what it will be in the future, it could be trees, flowers, and even vines. But it all depends on the seed buried years ago. So we believe the job of the teachers is to make these concepts attainable for children to lay the foundation for their future exploration. And as you can see previously, our kids are preschoolers. So uh, some may say they have limited recognition and concepts towards the world, but they are de developing and learning fast in our classroom too. So you can see, uh, we made our SDG project a little bit break down. In this picture, we're talking about carbon dioxide. So the students can cluster together to make oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the second principle is about sustainable, which means even targeting the same goal, the students are able to derive something new from different environments and at different age. For example, our Zero Hunger project. Our Zero Hunger project was carried out twice this year. One was camped at a local mountains village while students spent three days in nature, while the second based in the city where students can quite experience from classrooms, kitchens, and museums. So this is the picture when the students visited Hangzhou Low Carbon Technology Museum. They have a try, they try to find out uh, the different objects which contain or may emit carbon. As to the goal clean energy, we've got two teams learning the goal in the same period. The younger group in the morning, while the elder in the afternoon. They share the same schedule, but different levels of understandings. So that's our guiding principles as to the attainable and sustainable for different ages. And now there are three parts. Usually our project followed three parts. The first one is reading. So through reading, kids get to know the related concept from the eye of a lot of characters in the story. They are more appealing and enlightening. For example, for the goal number two, zero hunger. We've explored and read books like The Hungry Cat, The Beautiful Earth, The Polar Bear Rescue, for number two and 13 respectively. And we can see, we've shown them some numbers and uh, we read a little bit materials about the current situations before they go out to do the real practice and to experience the real situation. Then is the practice session. The students are having various interactions to understand these concepts. At the end of the day, uh, which I should emphasize is the uh, unique part of our project is the review part. Students would review and reflect their understandings by drawing, by making, by making, doing mind map, poster design, mini tech talk, immersive drama. And we believe in this way, students can better internalize what they have required today, which also by telling others what they have learned and what they can do in daily life. Students develop a sense of duty and pride that they are the heroes of the earth. So in this picture, they are drawing the diary for the preschoolers, like day one, what they have done. And for Second picture, all of them together were making vows and pledged for the clean energy. Okay, so next I'm going to introduce the two major projects of this year. The first 
is zero hunger. Okay, before all the little speakers come out to share their experience and understandings, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the project. And then they're going to tell you something about what they have learned or just uh, something impressed them most during this experience. So the first is Zero Hunger and Go 15, Life on Land. Okay, so for the first picture, <clears throat> we went to a local village to explore the local vegetation, especially we find something edible. And this is the most interesting part. You're not going out to find something beautiful, something tall, something special or something funny. You're going to find something that can be eaten. So the kids are, you know, very enthusiastic. They find all of the things and they taste the food in the mountains to realize that how people in the past, they totally relied on the nature. Students also made their own bamboo balls and chopsticks and were asked to use them during the meal time. And of course, after each meal, they have to wash them up on their own. So, okay, so on this picture, that is our campsite. That is the reveal part. The story is going to tell the stories uh, of what they have uh, come up when they marched into the forest. Okay, so that's the reveal part for the goal number two. That is in the city. When they go back, they draw the diary. And uh, these are their reflections they showed in front of the village house. And we also make plate. We use the clay to make plate. So look at all this delicious food. Can you recognize some of them? We've got, we've got very healthy diet, including carrots, beans, cabbage, but also, you know, sweets are children's favorite. So there are also donuts and ice cream, although they know they should eat less of them, but there's no stopping them to make this beautiful food on their plate every day. And for this one, our little dreamers, they're going, they were carrying out their first survey about healthy food, but not about themselves. It's about parents. So they went to interview the parents waiting outside the classroom about what kind of food they were having each day. They divided into different food groups like fruits, vegetables, dairy, grains, meat, meat and uh, you know plant protein and the last sweet. Okay, and after that, uh, they were taught to make this totally, uh, totally graph together. You can see they sign their names on the right. They all together interview three people, three parents. Okay, so the most exciting part, I can tell children can't wait to share their thoughts. Okay, so let's welcome the first kid. Let's welcome Joanna. Okay. Jenna, the floor is yours. Jenna, tell you. Tell some hello. Hello, my name is Joanna. I am. I am seven. six year old. Okay. Hello, Joanna. So Jenna, you've got something you want to share with us, right? We went. We went into the mountain to find the local plants. Oh, there it is. There is a lot of bamboo. We eat the we 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 made bowl and the chopstick from bamboo. We eat the we eat the bamboo shoot. It is hard to make for get to food. get food from nature. We should. We, we cherish the food. We have. We have. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So that's the bamboo balls and chopsticks made by kids and their parents. 
and they use it as oh. their goal for each meal. Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Joanna. And next one, Casey. Casey went to the same mountains with Joanna. So, Casey. My name is Casey. My name is seven years old. Look. Hello, Casey. Look, raspberry. Hello. Hello. Look, it's raspberry. They eat all the raspberry. It is very yummy. So that's you, right, Casey? That's you. You were eating raspberry. What happened here? A rice. Rice. So we we ate up all the rice, right? Yes. Yes. No. No waste. waste. Very good. So after a day, no, just a half day of excursion. So look at uh, what we have left on the table. Nothing. So the kids, they just ate up almost everything, especially the rice. Okay. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. Oh, next one, George. George. <laughs> You've met George. You met George, right? Yes. Hi, so George. George. Yeah. Hello, George. George. Hi. Hi. We learn. We learn the food pyramid. The ground level is green, including rice. Noodles and bread. This, the second level is vegetables and fruit. The third, the third is protein and dairy. The top is fats and sweets. We should eat more vegetables and fruit. Um, protein and dairy. We have. Can also choose to eat seasonal food because seasonal food has less 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 energy to grow with less carbon footprint. In summer, the seasonal food in my hometown are cucumber, tomato, eggplant. Grapes, peach, and watermelon. I eat lots of them. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, George. And we got Mia. 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 Hello, I am Mia. <coughs> Hello, Mia. Hello. I am Mia. I am I am Mia. I'm seven years old. We went to we went to the school kitchen to see how the show No ways. No wish. No wish. They are vegetables and fruits. We can eat with the skin, pumpkins and apples, uh, rock. rocky stock can make the big green soup, leftover rice can make puddings. Zero with zero hunger. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. <laughs> okay. Sorry, you have to see me again. Okay. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you the second SDG project that students have done this year. So the first one is zero hunger and uh, uh, Land life. Then the second is about goal 13, climate action, and goal 7, affordable clean energy. So I'm going to give you a little introduction about this. So we started with the phenomenon, extreme weather, and then the fact that global warming 
uh, in the classroom. So basically, we taught students to know what is global warming and what is extreme weather. We got to understand what is greenhouse effect and what is clean energy. These are pretty hard concepts, I think, for kids to understand. So therefore, we try to make them feel it, just feel it, basically. Okay, let's have a look. So they, they read the maps about the rising temperature uh, on the Earth, the different parts. For example, each kid, um, they're drawing the mind map about extreme weather. Sorry, oh, this one, this one is very interesting. So each kid wore a handbag with either letter C or O. You can find a lot of students with a handband. When the music is on, they dance to just heavily. Once it stopped, you have to cluster in two or three. Then we got combinations as carbon dioxide and oxygen. In this way, even preschoolers can get acquainted to form the form of carbon dioxide quickly. Besides, when we tell the kids about the challenges the polar bears are facing, we just found it really difficult to emphasize, especially when they're not very sensitive to all these numbers. So therefore, we designed a drama where all of them stand on a piece of paper, and each time the paper was just ripped off, ripped off a little. So they have to tap the balance on this piece of paper instead of Falling into the sea, just to feel like the helpless polar bear. And we went to the Hangzhou Low Carbon Technology Museum to find things. So these are the things they're going to find. Things that can emit carbon dioxide. Things that that is powered by clean energy and things we can do to reduce our carbon footprint. We also visited the electric car dealer to see and write in the e-cars uh, to feel like, how does it uh, feel like in the e -cars. The younger participants gave a mini tag talk after the camp while the elder ones designed posters to alert global warming. So I'm showing you the mind map. So the, the central circle is about global warming and it's about all what we have learned during the classroom learning, and it is done by the uh, elder group. So they are mostly grade three and four. And the solutions we can do to do is the uh, extreme weather. And these are the poster design. I'm, sh I'm sharing you some of them. And I like this idea. They just made a mountain, a really high mountain, and don't let the rubbish become the roof of the world. Because in fact, Everest is the roof of the world. But if human beings just kept littering, so there will be a higher mountain than the Everest. So that's a poster designed by a grade three student. And this is also the one designed by a grade four student melting away. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly. It just unlock because the tree has been chopped off. There's an ice cream. So on the ice cream cone, there's a drawing polar bear. And the cone on top of the ice cream is the melting earth. So what caused the melting earth is the carbon dioxide. So that's the poster designed by our students. Okay, so I would like to welcome the second team who's going to talk about the clean energy and global action. So let's welcome Charlotte. Charlotte, come in. Okay. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, hi, my name is uh, my name is Charlotte. I am seven years old. Extreme weather occur when common weather go extreme. For example, when rainy day becomes stormy, it brings heavy downpours, strong wind, thunder, and lightning. It could lead to severe disasters such as flood and cause great damage. 
take Zhengzhou, a mega city in China, as an example. Its average annual rain amount in the past decade is around 641 millimeters. However, a single day of July 20 this year, the sudden storm resulted in more than 644 millimeters of rain. More than 30 people died in the terrible flooding after the rain. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. And then let's welcome Sarah to talk about extreme weather more. So both of these students, they, they've done research about, you know, the extreme weather occurred this year in China. So they're really feeling the global warming is really happening around us. Sarah? Um, Hello. Hi, I, my name is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Extreme weather occur more frequently recently. That is true for it is happening around my life. Hangzhou has a record high rainfall and frequency of storms this summer ever since 1951. What is the cause of this extreme weather? Global warming is definitely a major reason of all these disasters. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so this is Sarah. Sarah is helping the other kids to be the flood. So this sheet of blue, blue cloth indicates the flood. So when the temperature is higher and the glacier is melting, so there are more flood. Thank you, Sarah. And next Thank one you, is Sarah. our younger group. Baby? Hi. Hi. My name is Navi. Hello, Navi. Hello, Navi. The ice. The ice is melting. Many animals are in danger. They can't find food. They can't find help. They are sick. I learned a story of polar bears. The story says the Arctic will disappear in 20 years. Then, Pavia had no home. When there was out a sheet of paper in class, I was scared and hopeless too. Save Pavia, save animals, save the earth. Thank you. Thank you, Navy. So this is the activity in class. So they were standing on a sheet of paper and uh, gradually they felt very nervous as the, the eyes become smaller and smaller. Thank you, Navy. And the last but not the least, younger presenter Watson. Hello. Hello, my name is Walter. I'm five years old. Hi, Walton. Too much carbon dioxide. Too much carbon dioxide. Cause global warming. So we use fuels and recycle. We should we should turn off light when we go out. We can do a little every day, but you can still make, make a big difference. I know. I know. I know. We can solar clean energy. My dad runs electric cars cleaner than gas cars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Watson. Okay, I'm afraid that kids, once they, they were done, they just uh, rushed out to play. Okay, and there's 
one more thing I, I would just like to share uh, with all of you. It's about just the immersive drama we've done last week. So it is addressed to the girl, 15, land life. Uh, the thing is, we, we create a drama. The moment when the kids stepped out of the car, we tell them the villagers need their help because you know, there's a fairy. There's a fairy who has been guarding the tea trees in this village for years, and she just disappeared. So we need children to work together to find this tea fairy. So it's a drama and the students won't thought about they were trying to crack problems. They were one of the detectives to solve this myth and help the villagers to get back those beautifully grown tea trees in this village. So we call it immersive drama. We can have a look. So there's the first step. The team was divided into two groups. One is, was going to enter from the backyard and the other from the front. So the younger team from the backyard, there was a lock on the door. They have to crack the code. Here is, uh, they were trying to find the pieces of evidence and uh, questions to get them through. And then two teams, they were met in the hall. Okay, however, however, two teams haven't met together. One is just outside this glass. They were still in the yard. So they have to collaborate to solve the problem together. And for the team who were stayed inside, they found clues. So that's the younger team. When they found the uh, clues, they tell the elder ones outside how to finish the task how to get them through. Okay, for example, they have to piece together the image of the tea fairy. Okay, so during the process, it involves a lot of knowledge about the ecosystem, about the tea garden, because tea enjoys a very long history in China. And uh, for the village people who dependent on the tea business, they developed an ecosystem with the nature for the sustainable growth. But there exist a lot of problems like the abuse of the pesticide and, uh, you know, uh, pollutions from the water source and other problems. So the students discover these problems gradually and they get to know what the tea really likes. For example, they found clues from the old picture. Yes, they've got their gadget on, their detectives in the story. And uh, they have to test the right pH for the soil and water for the tea. And uh, they learn to discover whether the soil has been contaminated or not. Okay. And after, after they found everything and they bring back the fairy from the tea garden, we really had an excursion to the tea garden. Okay, because it's, uh, you know, the late autumn, so we couldn't find much of the tea leaves or the fresh tea, but they met those farmers, the local farmers, they just talked to them to get to know the situations about the tea trees. Even at the end of the drama, the end of the day, some students were still questioning, is the tea, uh, is the tea fairy still existing? Okay, they, they thought it still exists. They thought they have to protect it. They, they're just the, uh, you know, the heroes to find her back. And uh, they, they will work together to protect the tea garden as a whole. Okay, so that's the thing what we learned from the, you know, clean energy and the climate action goal. And we really like this sentence. So I like to share it with all of you. It will never rain roses. So when we want to have more roses, we must plant more. Okay, so thank you. So that's our presentation. Thank you, Vera. You have really, really lovely keys and they're so cute. <laughs> thank you, Vera. It's well, wonderful. Jake, you're, you're just uh, at the right time entering this presentation and seeing so many cute creatures here. Listen, 
Yes, they were cute, but even more than that, it was wonderful. They were fantastic presentations. I was very, very impressed. Um, that was just marvelous. Vera, you should be congratulated on what you are doing with these students. Yeah, I will definitely tell them about that. They've done a great job. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful.